A new threat level in Colorado's COVID color dial, aiming to strike a balance and protect our economy. If there's something in between that could potentially protect Colorado, protect our people of Denver, and protect small business, I think that would be exceptional. It's saving some businesses from a full shutdown. Every minute, every day, every week counts. But for others? I think for many, this is going to be a final nail in the coffin. Thanks so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Grenauer. A lot of big changes coming to several Colorado counties come Friday as level red restrictions go into effect. But first, we have to get to some breaking news out of Southern Colorado, where a law enforcement task force is searching for this man. Audrey Burroughs, known in the area by the nickname Psycho, is wanted in connection to human remains found in Conejos County. Police say the remains are from three people and they're still working on identifying the victims. At this point, they are not connecting the remains to any missing person case, including Suzanne Morphew, who disappeared back on Mother's Day. All right, now to the latest on the worsening spread of coronavirus and the new color dial threat levels. As you can see on your screen, red, no longer the worst case scenario. Purple has been added as the most severe level. That's a full shutdown like what we saw early in the pandemic, but it will only be triggered if hospitals in a certain county are overwhelmed. As of right now, that doesn't affect any counties in our state. So let's take a look at the latest numbers from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. In just the last 24 hours, the state has confirmed 4,331 new cases of coronavirus. That's a total of more than 172,000 since this pandemic began. Some good news, though, the percentage of tests coming back positive continues to fall. The, positive, the positivity rate is what we're talking about. It's still well above the 5% threshold set by the World Health Organization, but it is trending down right now. Hospitalizations are the key concern, though, across our state. More than 1,400 coronavirus patients are getting hospital care right now. That's about 17% of the total hospital capacity statewide. Nearly half of the state's ventilators are also in use right now. We know there's a lot to digest as this pandemic continues to change our way of life and our Denver 7 team has you covered. Micah Smith has the latest on the effort to beef up hospital capacity and Eric Lufer brings us the pleas for more protection at local grocery stores. But let's start with Nicole Brady breaking down those level red restrictions coming Friday. We know restaurants have been hurting so much already, and now they're losing another revenue stream with indoor dining being off limits now under the red restriction. They can still do outdoor dining, though, so we have seen some restaurants and cafes setting up heat lamps in their patio areas, and you can still do takeout and delivery. But it's not just restaurants being affected. Other businesses are having to reduce capacity gyms. It's 10% capacity, so you might have to find another place to work out just at your home or outside. Non-essential office workers are encouraged to go remote. Non-essential retail and even some critical retail like grocery stores could be reducing capacity. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some lines when you're shopping. And then a big one with Thanksgiving just eight days away. No private gatherings are allowed with people outside your own household. Denver's mayor and the governor pleaded with Coloradans yesterday to follow these rules. And I'm calling on Denver and the metro region to step up like we've done before to push back, to push back mightily on this virus and get back under control. The blunt force response of another stay at home order can be avoided. The goal is to prevent us having to go into that purple zone when even outdoor dining would be excluded and we would see more of a full shutdown like we had in the spring. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. And despite the uncontrolled spread of the virus, Governor Polis and health leaders are still encouraging in-person learning for students in grades K through 5. The Colorado Education Association released a statement speaking to the challenges districts face, saying in part, as community spread increases, it becomes increasingly difficult for schools to maintain appropriate staffing levels to remain open. School districts across Colorado are putting forth valiant efforts to, to safely remain open for in-person learning, but they're facing tremendous barriers on a daily basis. Taking another look at how our hospitals are shaping up, you can see there are now more hospitalizations than at any point during this pandemic. But our hospitals are developing plans to handle a surge of coronavirus patients. Denver 7's Micah Smith shows us the two main concerns those plans must address by today's deadline. 
The surge plan that hospitals have to have in place, it must include ways to maximize ICU beds, but local hospitals here in the Denver Metro are facing a bigger shortage and that staffing. Governor Polis's executive order requires all hospitals to submit plans to the state with their maximum surge bed count today. They also want that plan to include how to transition medical and surgical beds to ICU if needed. And the state wants a detailed staffing plan on how to provide adequate care for everyone. But after talking with the chief medical officer for Denver Health, Dr. Connie Savor Price. Staffing is still a big concern. They do have a plan in place, but she worries about staff members that are burned out. She told me so many nurses have been working nonstop since March and have been called in on their days off. Now our focus is preserving our staff who are tired, who have been working hard since the spring. Um, they want to take vacations, and some of them with the high rates in the community also get sick. Some states like North Dakota are requiring nurses that have tested positive for COVID-19 to continue working if they are asymptomatic. Dr. Price says we are not there yet, and she's very proud of how her staff has responded to this difficult situation. She also feels confident about the quality of care that patients have received, but she's pleading with everyone to help her staff out by wearing a mask and social distancing. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Micah, thank you. Denver International Airport workers are remembering one of their own today. TSA agent Edward Faktorovich died on Monday from the coronavirus. He is the ninth TSA worker nationwide to die from COVID-19. Edward's family says he was excited to work as a TSA agent when he was hired to work the security checkpoint back in 2018. But when the pandemic hit, his niece says he was nervous to work on the front lines. He didn't really want to go to work, but he felt like he had to because he had to help those people. There would be days where he would be pretty okay, and then there were days where um, he would run a very high fever and he'd be coughing a lot. Megan says her uncle ended up calling 911 when he started feeling really sick, but it was just too late. His family hopes his story will now encourage people to stay home for the holidays. Grocery store workers have been on the front lines of this pandemic all along, and it's taken a deadly toll as well. Denver 7's Eric Luver has more on the plea for better protection as the virus continues to wreak havoc in our communities. As of yesterday, there were more than 100 active COVID cases between the two big supermarkets here in Colorado, Safeway and King Supers. Some employees are flat out fed up with what's happening at their workplace. We talked to Felicity Evett, who works at the King Supers in Capitol Hill. That's where two employees died from COVID-19. She says morale among workers has been low. She also says her hands are tied when it comes to being able to implement certain rules like lines outside grocery stores to limit capacity and employees sanitizing carts regularly. There have also been some unfortunate incidents with customers. Listen. There's a customer that comes here almost every single night. In the beginning of the pandemic, he did not want to wear a mask. He coughed on one of the employees, and within a week, that employee had tested positive for COVID. Both King Supers and Safeway tell us that they are still taking everything seriously when it comes to precautions and following CDC guidelines. I'm Eric Lufer, Denver 7. And right now, the state health department is giving an update on contact tracing efforts. With our human contact tracers overwhelmed by the levels of community spread in our state, technology can help fill the gap. So state leaders are asking you to opt into the exposure notification app on your smartphone. The app notifies you if one of your recent close contacts, who is also using the app, tests positive. If you get that notification, you have an exposure risk and you should isolate and schedule a test. We know many of you have had to wait for a test and sometimes wait even longer for the results. But today, the FDA gave emergency approval to the first rapid at-home test. The Lucera COVID-19 works by searching for the virus's genetic material. You administer a nasal swab to yourself and then insert it into a vial. A light will show you if results are positive or negative. You do need a prescription to buy that at-home test kit. And more hopeful news on the vaccine front. Pfizer plans to, to submit its COVID-19 vaccine to the FDA for emergency approval by this Friday. Final results showed it is nearly 95% effective. In the trial of thousands of participants, only eight vaccinated patients contracted the virus. The only side effect reported was fatigue, and that was only in 4% of patients.